high school football like never before. Highlights, instant reaction, and all the scores. 17 Sports Director Taylor Shaw brings you FFX, Friday Football Extra, driven by Sangara Subaru, and Dignity Health, Mercy and Memorial Hospitals. Oh, this is fun. Playoff hey. football returns to Kern Look County. <laughs> 23 teams start their Valley title quest. I'm Taylor Schaub. He's Chris Burton. He's joining me tonight because we've got so much action from across this great central section of ours. Isn't that right, Chris? Oh, Taylor, we had so much action. 22 teams took the field tonight. We had one team on a bye, but we are so excited. Let's get right into it. As Coach says, it's time to give the people what they want. Gather round. It's time for your FFX Game of the Week, powered by SCOE, your Southern California Orthopedic Institute. All right, we're going to head north for our de facto Game of the Week. The top half of the D1 bracket, well, it gave us an 8-9 matchup. Clovis hosting Garces, the Cougars, with a little BTM on the back of their jerseys. That stands for boys to men, not the singing group from Philly. Late first quarter, Garces lines up for a field goal. It's a fake. It's Cage Williams running for the first down. And then it's Jordan Gallegos. We've seen this a lot all year. He calls his own number from the four-yard line. Rams up 6-0. Second quarter we go. Cougars. Well, they would be at the Garces four pass. Incomplete. Rams force two turnovers on this one. And after a little Juju Smith return later in the game. The Rams were up big, but Clovis just kept pouring it on in the second half. This offense awoke, and they came back. They beat those Garces Rams. It was a close one, 21-20. That's your final. The Garces Rams, they're going home. It's a long one. Mm. That bus ride home is a long one, Taylor. And elsewhere in Clovis, Centennial Cinderella season came to a close tonight. Over at Veterans Memorial Stadium, we have a proud parent, assuming that's the dad of Nathaniel Rosas, number 53 for the Centennial Golden Hawks. The lineman making a nice tackle on that play. Centennial, the 10 seed in Division I, visiting 7th seeded Clovis North. This one, all Broncos early in the third quarter. Mario Cosma, Vincent Cordoba racing into the end zone, a 15-yard touchdown there. And then next possession, it's Cosma to Cordoba. Once again, that connection working for them all night. That one, a 45-yard score. Broncos would take this 40-7. to Clovis North is moving on. Centennial Golden Hawks going home. Well, it was a great season at that for the Centennial Golden Hawks. Also a great season for Frontier as we head to D2 action. The Titans only one of two Bakersfield teams hosting Frontier, hosting Lompoc. That's a coastal school. Third quarter we go. Lompoc's Marcus Ballion takes the handoff. And he finds his way into the end zone. Frontier still leading big in this one, though. And you can see why, because they got playmakers all around their roster, just like number 44. We couldn't find his number on Max Pratt's roster, but do you know what he found, Chris? Did he find the end zone? He found the end zone. We're Look gonna at get all the space get there. there. Frontier wow. rolls in this one, 49. 26. He gave us plenty of time to ad lib there. Yeah, yes, he did. <laughs> a thriller over at BCHS. Fifth seeded Eagles hosting Edison. Second quarter we go. Edison scores first. It's Jonathan Urbanks. Clowns his way into the end zone. The short score would give Edison a 8 0 lead. They would hold that for a while. Overtime now. Tied at 14 14. Yaj Vance finds Rashad Perry. So Edison is up 21 14. The Eagles still have a chance. And guess what? A little magic. Jordan Delgado finds Dylan Johnson, who finds Chase Furtado. Ooh. Boom! A little trick play. A little trick play, Chris. Guess what? The Eagles will go for two. And who are they going to go to? Is it Bryson Waterman? It might be. Let's check it out. It might be. It might be. It might be. It is. Guess what? Bakersfield Christian advances. It was a thriller. They take it in overtime. 22-21. We just got that score in. So, Taylor, the uh, Kern County team's 2-2 right now. I've been keeping track here in my brain. 
And uh, let's see how Ridgeview does against Hanford. Unfortunately, it's not going to go well if you're rooting for Kern County teams. Number four, Bullpups of Hanford hosting the 13th seed in Ridgeview. Wolfpack, and that's the first quarter. Donovan Smith finding the end zone. And this one was all Bullpups. There's a nice pass to uh, Albert Richardson. Hustling to the end zone for a 44-yard score. It's a 14-7 Hanford lean. Bullpups take it 84-21. to Maybe the most points I've ever seen put up on a high school football field. Is that fair? <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> 84 points. Cool. Wow. Ridgeview Wolfpack going home. Still ahead here on FFX, though. Tehachapi caps off a magical run with their first league title since 2011. But does the Cinderella story end tonight? Well, fresh off a of bye, we will see how the Warriors fared in their game against Mount Whitney. FFX back in two minutes. You're watching FFX Friday Football Extra. Powered by Sangara Subaru. Serving Kern County for over 50 years. You're watching FFX Friday Football Extra. Powered by Dignity Health, Mercy and Memorial Hospitals. Hello, human kindness. Well, it's time to visit 2022 Cinderella. Tehachapi capped off a magical run in the mountains with their first league title since back in 2011. It was also their 31st in school history. The Warriors earned a three seed in Division Three play, and they were hosting Mount Whitney. It was cold up in the mountains, at least that's what our cameraman told us. First quarter, up 7-0, facing a fourth and one. It's A.J. Anderson, he bust free. That's a 63-yard run, Chris. 14 nothing. A.J. Anderson, have yourself a year, right? Taylor, that is FFX MVP candidate A.J. Anderson to you. That's right. All right, it's Dominic Pareda. Under pressure, scrambles, finds a hole. The QB keeper makes it 14-7. But then, well, Tehachapi just hammers it home in this one. That's Mike Jones with a little goal line score. Punches his way in. And then a little more Tehachapi in the fourth quarter. How about A.J. Anderson? Going about down him? the sideline. Oh, man, look at that hit. Takes the contact. You love to see it. Well, Tehachapi advances. The season continues, 37 14. You know, we're just built for games like this in these kind of conditions, and playing with the lead certainly helps. We can just grind out those long drives on the ground. More D2 action. Kennedy coming off their first league banner ever. How would they fare against in area foe Highland? We'll go to the first quarter. Julian Orozco of the uh, Kennedy Eagles. They are hyped for this game again. Coming off that league banner. There he is, Julian Orozco. He is going to throw it to the end zone. He finds his man. That Boom. is Gunna's helm for six. And then in the uh, fourth, Jace Demacabalin. That's Jace Demacabalin running it up the gut. 21-7, Kennedy. Later in the game, Highland QB Jojo Mata. He would try to find his receiver deep. That is an interception, and that all but puts it away for the league champs. Kennedy goes on to win this one, 21-7. Let's hear from Cooper. You know, the kids found it somewhere, found it just enough energy to, to be able to compete in that second and third quarter, hung on in the fourth quarter. All right, we got a 9-8 matchup in Delano. Chavez hosting Arroyo Grande. First quarter, it's Israel Gonzalez. How many times have we said his name this year? A lot. You know why? Because he makes plays. Speaking of making plays, you want to see him again? All right, round two, deja vu. Israel Gonzalez. How about that? Unfortunately, though, Chavez couldn't hold on the remainder of this game. They fall to Arroyo Grande. 27 20. All right, we're going to stay in D3. Last year's Cinderella Independence in Porterville looking to pick up where they left off, at least in postseason play, and they did. Second quarter, Panthers up 7 0. Independence quarterback Antoine Arcia finds Brian Arana. Nice grab there in the end zone, so we're tied at 7 0. And then it's Anthony Rico. Well, Chris, you've seen a lot of Anthony. Well, he was one of the postseason heroes last year. He's back for his senior season. And what a senior season it has been for this kid. Eagles spread their wings in this one. 28-7. The Independence, or Independence Falcons, excuse me, they have some postseason magic. I think it's undeniable at this point. Taking down a two seed in the first round of the D3 playoffs. 
Well, they get hot when it matters. All right, there's a big game coming up next. It's Taft entering the postseason with something to prove. But can the Spartans pull off the upset against a number two seed? It's Taft versus South next on FFX. FFX is proud to partner with Valley Sports Media. Follow at V Sports Media for exclusive football content throughout the season. Welcome back. The Taft Wildcats had a regular season to dream about, but all that's wiped away in the postseason. Here you take it one game at a time. That's coaches speak, but it's true. Number two, Taft taking on the 15th seeded South Spartans, and it was all Spartans early. They strike first. A high pass to Shane Call. A strong catch in the end zone there. Spartans up 7 0. Then it's Taft running back. Cyrus Gaylord answering that power of his way in. So the game is tied at 7. How about Shane Carr again? He can do it all, this time in the air. A little touchdown. On the ground, actually. So it's 15 7. The Taft showing that fight that has led them all season long. Who do we have here? This is Caleb Kozlowski with the strong run. Loses it out of bounds, but that doesn't matter. Taft pulls ahead and takes this one out from under the Spartans. Out from one of their noses, really, 21 to 13, and we'll stay in D3. We head up to Wasco. The Tigers coming off a program-defining, what some might call a program-defining win over Centennial last playoffs. But as the stars shining early, 21-8 north in the third. That's Michael Dominguez. He takes the plunge. Wasco still down a touchdown, though. And the Stars weren't showing any mercy. Fourth quarter, North quarterback Carson Bennett on the keeper. Stars up a pair of touchdowns. Wasco got one of those back, though, on an I Isaiah Juarez rush. Then with a minute left, Isaiah Acosta looking for the edge, finds it. Cameraman takes the hit, but Acosta is in. You're the cameraman. <laughs> I was the cameraman here. And Taylor, I'm doing great. I feel more alive than I ever have. And for those two points that would have put Wasco tied with North, it's Acosta again tripped up in the backfield. And with him go Wasco's playoff hopes. It is the North Stars over the Wasco Tigers. 28-26, your final. And I'm Chris Burton. <laughs> and I'm Chris Burton. <laughs> Chapter Generals also found themselves in a tight one at least early. But this one a barn burner, Taylor. Second quarter tied at seven. Ezekiel Osborne, his favorite target. Jesus Figueroa, he does the rest. 70 yards for the score. 14-7, Generals. Two plays later, Jacob Poole cut up the middle. He says, yeah, I'll see your 70-yarder and raise you a 70-yarder. And this one was all Shafter late. 42-21, the eight-seed Shafter over nine, Strathmore. All right, big win for the Generals there, but we've got more action coming up next. We take you around the county. FFX is proud to be fitted by Finos. When it comes to quality men's suits in Bakersfield, Finos men's wear and tuxedo is all you need. Well, the Bears beat Lindsay 30 to 20. That's going to do it for this first postseason edition of FFX, Chris. It was a good one. Now join us Sunday after Sunday Night Football because we're going to have a complete recap.